It's unlike any back to school year anyone has ever had. It's the type of virus that can easily spread. Coronavirus and classrooms. How do schools manage? We're learning right along with, with everybody else. How do parents manage? I did my day job while my kids sat next to me um, doing their schoolwork. And most important, what do kids think? Football locker rooms, man. It's like our memories are great, like pregame, like yeah, I, like I've always, I've always looked forward to going to the locker room before games, listen to music, but it's like this year, you just can't do that. But there are choices for parents, hybrid, homeschool, all new ways to describe going back to school. Consistency and control, you can provide that. You wouldn't have to worry about um, cases. We'll explore it all. Open for discussion beyond back to school starts now. Welcome to this special edition of First at Four. I'm Jody Kurzman. Hope Sisk is joining us tonight as we present Open for Discussion Beyond Back to School. It's a discussion we hear on every corner, every grocery store you're in. If one thing about this upcoming school year has remained consistent, it is that schools, teachers, parents, students are having important, sometimes emotional discussions about what going back to school in a pandemic looks like. And the other thing that has remained consistent is the inconsistency. That couldn't be more true. Just last night, in what was probably safe to call a surprise decision, the Bismarck School Board voted to start the school year in a hybrid model. So what does hybrid look like? Students go to school for two days of in-class instruction, then spend three days at home for online learning. The specifics of that calendar and schedule have yet to be released. Superintendent Jason Hornbacher made the recommendation to the board saying if school starts at full time in the classroom, he fears that the district will not be able to sustain that for long. As of now, school still starts for Bismarck's public schools on August 31st. This was a tough blow at my house last night when that email came across. We had some, some tears and some upset young ladies. And all I have to do is scroll through my social media feed and see exactly the same thing. A lot of parents waiting on edge to figure out how do I make a plan when we don't have a plan? Right. That's exactly a lot of waiting. Exactly. So still a lot to think about. Those teachers are probably going to have to be working a lot more. They're also getting the same amount of exposure to all of the students. We reached out to BPS today to ask some more questions about this. They said if it hasn't come already. An email will be coming today to parents with more information on what those days and schedules will look like. Also, it isn't too late to opt in on digital learning if families choose not to go with the hybrid model. Now, the other issue facing schools, of course, is money. Mm -hmm. Like everyone else in the pandemic, schools need to make drastic changes to their environment. From spacing out seating to installing sanitation equipment, those changes, they all come at a mm -hmm. cost. Now, Jacob Noterman tells us how government funding comes into play here, but with some strings attached. This fall, every school is an experiment. While the mediums might be different, the goal for North Dakota schools is the same. To open their buildings safely and to keep their students and staff safe and their families safe when they go home at night. Through the CARES Act, more than $20 million has been given to North Dakota schools. But for many, those funds had to be spent on efforts outside of classroom modifications. The Elgin New Leipzig School District spent 45 of the $57,000 it was given just on transportation to send food to students. So a lot of that extra dollars will probably go just to make sure we uh, paid our drivers, which we were required to make sure we, in order to get the money to keep paying our staff, which, you know, was a good thing, but it's kind of money that I, I could have claimed already for what we would lose in this funding cycle. If a district doesn't use enough of their budget by July, they have to forfeit the excess. CARES Act dollars came in late spring, so many schools were forced to quickly move the money before knowing where it would be needed. Because a lot of superintendents are kind of like me, they wanted to hold off on committing a bunch of dollars to something we didn't know whether or not would see the light of day. State lawmakers are working on a bill that would allow schools to put CARES money in their building funds and then take them back out for the next academic year. But that bill can't be passed until January, meaning some schools put their money in a fund, hoping they can get it back. In Bismarck, I'm Jacob Noterman, reporting for your news leader. 
And another concern, some parents are electing to pull their kids from the district entirely and go to homeschooling. That not only shrinks the classes, it also shrinks available funds for the district. Something to consider. Now in Washington, D.C., there are a few bills similar to another CARES Act, most notably the HEROES and the HEALS Act, but neither of them are moving forward and schools don't know what to expect. Stick with us. Coming up next on Beyond Back. The big question is, can I do this? Um, and what does it take to get started? Alternative learning models. A lot of families are turning to homeschooling. Up next, we'll tell you how to navigate the process of keeping kids at home. Whether it be because of health reasons or concerns for safety in school buildings, more local parents are considering going in a brand new direction and adding educators to their job titles. It's enough to take your breath away, but Bismarck Mandan Area Home Educators Group says interest in homeschooling is going way up. I met with one family making the switch from public school to homeschool, and they're telling us how they're navigating the process. Navigating this school year will mean making some heavy choices for some parents. I was not feeling comfortable, um, even if they did require masks, let's say. Um, with kids, especially the younger ones, it's going to be impossible to enforce it. I mean, just being honest here. Jennifer Carey is immunocompromised, but with a six-year-old and a career as a substitute yeah. teacher, she was looking for a way to protect her family's health without letting her child's education suffer. In school is kind of out for us because I'm immune compromised. I have a C4 deficiency. We had done the distance learning, but my daughter kind of didn't like being sat in front of the tablet the whole time. So we decided to do homeschool so that we can just do it differently if we need to. She turned to Bismarck Mandan Area Home Educators for answers. We are receiving about 10 to 15 new members in our Facebook group every day. Um, and of course, several emails every day. The same week, some of North Dakota's biggest school districts released their restart plans. Group President Christy Rose held an informational meeting for the homeschool organization that serves some 160 parents in the Bisman area. About 100 people came to learn more. The big question is, can I do this? Um, and what does it take to get started? While the thought of taking on homeschool may be daunting for families. Never, ever dreamed we would, ever. So many of these seasoned homeschool parents say they struggled in the beginning, then discovered how the system could fit into their routine and improve their homes. It's a heavy load on a mom. Homeschooling is a lot because you're teacher, cleaning lady, cook, you know. But really, a lot of those have been shared among the children and, and when you think about it like you can make your eggs for breakfast that's a life skill that you will live with the rest of your life when you leave our home you need to learn to cook and clean some say the homeschool model is teaching their kids lessons that become even more meaningful during a pandemic like the things around you can be ways to enrich your life families get their choice among curriculum as long as they teach four hours a day for 175 days a year we just love to be active people and so i picked a curriculum that did a lot of hands-on things and so we could go to the heritage center and still be doing school and stuff like that even though i have a going into eighth grade child. Christy even says many meet their instructional requirements despite both parents working. For Jennifer, that would have meant being in the classroom. She says her circumstances helped her arrive at this decision, but that doesn't mean it was an easy choice. I feel I have this responsibility to sub, like that's my job and I want to be able to do it. And so like I have that guilt that I'm not doing my job if I'm staying home, but then I also have my job as a mother and I had to weigh the two and it was, it was a difficult choice. It's the correct choice for us though, I believe. Now they embark on a path that's sure to include hurdles, but one she hopes will get them where they want to be, back to normal. I love teaching our kids at our district and she loves being at school, so it's something that we plan to go back to as soon as we're able to. Homeschooling can still be an option for some school districts. You just need to submit your letter of intent two weeks prior to the day instructions start. So in Bismarck, for example, that day would be August 31st, meaning you have until about the 17th to consider it. Yeah, it's interesting how many people are, are thinking about that this year, but homeschooling mm -hmm. is not for everyone. And probably a lot of parents learned that in March 
when our kids were sent home, me included. I think so. A lot of families have weighed the risks and benefits and decided to send their kids back to class full time. I talked to the Guffmiller family who did just that and they say they are ready for school to start. I'm gonna have this one. The Guffmiller kids are pretty excited about these school supplies. One, two, three, four. Even the face masks. Covers your sneeze so other people don't get the virus. Because these masks. I don't wanna get COVID. And these pencils, crayons, and notebooks. My girls. Mean they'll soon be going back to school. See all my friends. They've missed their friends. Seeing my friends. And their teachers. Their parents have missed the routine that comes with school. I don't know. We really feel that that structure is important for them as well as the curriculum that they got at school. Distance learning last spring wasn't easy for the Guth Millers. Both parents had to work, which meant grandma came over to help with schoolwork. That way they would at least be done and we could have family time in the evenings. But an underlying health condition forced Kyla to work from home which meant this family's routine was completely out of whack. Kyla says she noticed it in her children's attitudes. Our children actually um, became kind of lazy and less motivated. They didn't want to do things. They didn't want to get up and go. They wanted to stay in their pajamas all day. So as they prepare to go back to face-to-face -to -face learning, they're practicing wearing masks. We talk about the importance of wearing them. They also talk about using hand sanitizer, washing their hands, and not touching things. Overall, I'm not worried at this point, so I feel comfortable sending them back. Jody, it makes you realize how important that routine is. Mm -hmm. Even though the Guth Millers are comfortable sending their kids back face to face, they'll only be going back two days a week now that Bismarck Public Schools announced they'll be starting the year in a hybrid mode. And I talked to Kyla today. She told me that she's frustrated about that and she's worried about her kids missing out on that time in the classroom. She yeah. says it will take a toll on their family as both she and her husband they have to go to work like so many families, so they'll probably depend on grandma to help out again. Many families, I think, are feeling this way and scrambling to make new plans in the days leading up to school starting. And a lot of grandparents finding ways to step up yes, even during this time. Absolutely. Yeah. Coming up on Beyond Back to School. They've told us just to kind of be ready for any, any possibility. Teachers once again being asked to step up, do something new, and teach in a pandemic. So what do they say about it? We'll tell you just ahead. Stay with us. A scoop chair. These are good, especially for me. Oh, my mother-in-law's going to have to watch him. Yeah, like, no, we can't ask. I'm going to be scared. And just so you know, our plan, just so you know, if any of these situations comes up, it is the responsibility of the school district to provide you the option to be to deliver that at home. That clip from last week has been played a lot lately. It's almost hard for some of us to watch. It's a Minnesota teacher so scared about going back to school while taking care of her young son. She cries to Governor Tim Walls. She said later that teachers need to advocate for themselves, but that it sometimes feel like teachers are the enemy just because they're asking for safe returns to classrooms. It is heartbreaking video and you think of all the teachers in that situation who have young kids of their own. I've talked to several friends who are teachers what do I do with my own kids? There's... We are asking so much of them as mm -hmm. teachers alone, let alone thinking of them as full people with full lives. Right. And sometimes they do have a life teams. outside of the yeah. classroom. That's right. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. Well, some of these teachers and staff have their own families to worry about, or they themselves may be high risk. It's really a tough situation for a lot of teachers. And just like all of us, they're having to adapt their plans as everything keeps changing. I think most of us parents learned a super valuable lesson last spring about just how important teachers are. And I will forever give the very best teacher appreciation <laughs> gifts from here on out because they are amazing. That has changed, definitely, mm -hmm. the way we give gifts and show our gratitude. And it is certainly well due. Well, again, teachers may be asked to be flexible to teach both in the classroom and possibly likely online. Yeah, Amanda, a preschool teacher that I spoke with says it's a little overwhelming, but she is determined to make it a great year despite the pandemic. Barb Lutzen, known as Miss Barb to her students, is busy getting her classroom ready for a new school year. There it is. This will be the start of my 27th year. But this back to school prep is unlike any she's ever experienced before. 
It'll go on, it'll be good. Miss Barb is determined to make the time she has with her students in this classroom the very best it can be. She is prepared for more hand washing breaks and more hand sanitizer. Teaching them to keep their hands down is going to be um, probably a little more tasking. The way she teaches may have to change a little too. Because I teach very young children, we are always playing and it's usually hands-on and toys and things like that. And um, just from touching everything, it's can we still play as groups or are we gonna have to play more individually? and things like that, that's a big concern. Students will have assigned seating. I usually just let them pick their seat and that will, that might be a little different for them. Different, but also an opportunity to learn. For every minute they're with us, we have to make it a learning and teaching moment. And this year, Miss Barb will treasure each moment with her students. We have some nerves and there's some different feelings that happen and go on with that, but it's still a start of a year and it's exciting and to get the kids in here back again. Now Miss Barb will have just eight students to start the school year, four in her morning preschool class and four in her afternoon session. So that she says will make the, sm the small class size will make social distancing a lot easier. As easy as it can be exactly. with preschoolers. Exactly. Because that is a wild card in itself. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> So now imagine, Miss Barb has been teaching for 27 years, imagine teaching in the middle of a pandemic being a first year teacher. That's who I talked to. I talked to a first year teacher and she says she actually does feel prepared for the year. She says she's fresh, she's familiar with technology, and she's watched what other communities did in the spring. They have definitely not how I imagined it starting. Not even a global pandemic could dampen Lauren Johnson's enthusiasm about setting up her very first classroom. Finally be in here and think like, I'm going to have my class. These are my kiddos that I get to teach. It's so exciting. So whatever the circumstances are, I'm just like over the moon that I have a classroom of kiddos that I get to make a difference for. She already knows, you know, six feet apart, she'll be juggling hybrid learning and flexible seating options for 18 second grade students. Chair. These are good, especially for reading. At Bismarck's Jeanette Myrie Elementary. They've told us just to kind of be ready for any, any possibility. But she says her teacher training last spring, when the pandemic hit, each kid will get their own, proved um, educators can like continue this, to meet students' day. needs. To see the curriculum that they pulled together for nine weeks um, over the course of three days was absolutely inspiring and encouraging. She says any and all in-person instruction time will give her valuable insight into the way her students learn. We want to give them a normal experience, but we don't want to put them in danger. So I asked Lauren, you have all this energy and eagerness to start your year and start your career. Do you think that's a benefit for those first time teachers going into this year with all of the challenges? You know, as she said, teachers are built this way year after year, whether it's your first or your 27th, like Miss Barb, you are there solely for the purpose to improve the lives of your students. And I think it tells you just how special these teachers yeah. are. They're just excited to be with their students, whether it means they have to be in front of the computer. If yeah. they get to see them a couple days a week, they just, I mean, their heart is, is in it for those kids. And I know. Our and kids are lucky to have them. I know. Like we mentioned, so many parents understanding how grateful they are for their teachers in their lives. This is an opportunity to show them some patience yeah. and to go through this process. We're all learning together. We are all yeah. learning together. You're exactly right. Mm -hmm. Coming up, there will be fewer fans in the stands and a radically different experience for student athletes. Up next, what school fall sports will look like. A lot of questions still swirling about what the fun parts of school will look like. Bismarck Public Schools says things like band and chorus will indeed be a little different. Administrators plan to use their big auditoriums for those kind of elective classes to adequately space students out. Everything will be wiped down and sanitized in between classes. Face masks will be worn when social distancing can't be maintained. We just want to make sure that we can get kids back to doing what they love to do, but doing it in a safe manner and making sure that everybody stays safe. Bismarck Public School administrators are also postponing all of their fall programs and performances until later on in the year to limit the amount of crowds in their facilities. 
Sports have also been a hot topic of discussion. How will students play their fall sports safely? A lot of people wondering from postponing seasons to limiting the number of crowds, the number of fans in the crowd, coronavirus is impacting it all. It sure is, but as Haley Brown reports, Bismarck Public School administrators say they are determined to make sports and extracurricular activities available to students in the safest way possible. Bismarck High Demon football will not only be a different experience for spectators, but to members of the team as well. Big win, you look forward to the, your family and friends coming out on the field, take pictures, and no, nope, none of that this year, can't, can't do that. You just gotta, you win and you walk off the field and go home. Masks will be required with all transportation and coaches will be wearing masks when social distancing isn't possible. Outdoor event crowd sizes will be limited to 500 in the district's face-to-face -face model and about 250 in the hybrid mode of instruction. Sometimes we've had 5,000 people at a high school football game. So those are some of the things, procedures, uh, with who we're going to allow into the games and uh, how many are going to be allowed from the home team and the away team, media. <laughs> Student athletes also have concerns about college recruitment and how that will look for them this fall. This year has been very difficult for recruiting, so that means this winter season is going to come up. That's me make it that much more important because they're going to coaches are going to want to come out because they weren't able to come this in the summer to recruit. But it's been very it's been a difficult summer for recruiting. Activity directors say competitions may change based on the district's coronavirus risk level. In Bismarck, I'm Haley Brown for your news leader. Bismarck and Mandan both this week sent out their policies regarding fans at sporting events. They say they'll have a voucher system. In order to buy a ticket to a game, you have to have a voucher. Now for outdoor events, they're asking for families only to have two spectators per athlete. And masks will be required when social distancing isn't possible. And due to some venue sizes, some events may be held without fans. That's something your family will experience. You have a swimmer. As a mom of a swimmer, we've yeah. talked a lot about this, that the girls may be wearing masks right up until the time they get into the water because how do you social distance on that pool deck? And, right. and we might just be watching an online stream from home. So mm -hmm. lots of lots of new things that we'll navigate as the season goes on. A totally foreign concept. Yes. Stick with us. We'll be back to wrap things up right after this. Hope, I think we learned a lot by yeah, working on this special, lots mm -hmm. of answers to our questions and, and maybe some more questions. But in talking with teachers and administrators, one thing that I kind of heard over and over and over is that we need to be flexible. Yeah. And communication is going to be even more important this school year than ever before. And I think modeling that for our students as well is going to help all of us get through this. If we can show our kids what it means to be patient and flexible and adaptable, yes. then that will get us through. There are some lessons there that will help our students long after so. they're done with school. Thank so. you so much for joining us for Open for Discussion Beyond Back to School. We talked about a lot in just a half an hour. There are more stories to be talked about. You're, you can be sure that we will be there to tell those stories.